In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a paired, otherwise known as a dependent, student t-test. I'm going to start off by selecting a column type of data set. And in this case, I'm going to enter paired or repeating measured data, each subject on a separate row. So I'm going to create. Now with this example data set, I'm going to pretend that I've done a cell culture experiment. And what I've done is I've counted the, the number of viable cells, so those cells that are alive, before and after treating my cells with a drug. What I want to do is to compare the number of viable cells before and after the treatment. So what I'm going to do is create two columns. So I've got group A I'm going to call before, and group B is after, so before and after the drug treatment just going to go ahead and paste some data in here. So these are cell numbers. If I wanted to, I could enter on the side where it says title, I can enter a title for each row. For example, this could be in well one, this could be well two, etc, etc. The most important thing to bear in mind is when you're setting up your data for a paired analysis, is that the data on the rows is the paired data. I can't have the before from well one up here and the after from well one down here, for example. It has to be adjacent to each other. So to perform the paired student t-test, we first need to go to analyze, click this, and under the column analyses option, I'm gonna select t-tests and non-parametric tests. I want to include both the before and after data sets in the analysis. So I'm gonna leave that and then click okay. So in the next window, uh, what we want to do under experimental design, we want to select paired. So these are paired values. Next, under the assume Gaussian distribution, I'm going to leave this as yes to use the parametric test. In other words, I want to do a dependent student t-test. If one or both of your data sets is not normally distributed, you would select this. Uh, no option, which is where you would do a, a Wilcoxon match pairs signed rank test, which I'll also show you further down the line. So I'm going to leave this as yes. And then the test we're going to pick is the paired t-test. So what we're interested in is the differences between the paired values. So if they're consistent differences, which we expect them to be in this case, then you want to select this one. If the differences in your data are not consistent, you would otherwise select the ratio paired t-test. So instead of looking at the difference between before and after, for example, it would look at the ratios between before and after. So in this example, because we're anticipating a consistent difference in our pairs, we're going to leave it as a paired t-test. Next, under the options tab, uh, you just want to make sure you double check all these options. So in this instance, I want to do a two-tailed analysis. I'm going to leave the, the report differences as after minus before. I want to report 95% confidence intervals and then report in APA style format and click OK to run the test. So let's go through this result sheet. So again, um, we're starting off by looking at what data set we've analyzed. So it's data set one, column B was after and column A was before. Uh, and here is your results for the paired t-test. The first row indicates the p-value. So you can see straight away, this is less than 0.001. So this is very significant. The p-value summary is indicated uh, as three asterisks, which is indicative of the APA style format. So if you were doing a, a graph, you would you could then indicate the, this p-value significance with the three asterisks. Was the result significantly different? Was it less than 0.05? Yes, it was. It was a two-tailed analysis. Uh, we've also got the t-statistic reported here and the degrees of freedom, and the number of pairs. So we have seven pairs of data here. If we scroll down a little bit more, uh, we can see how big the actual difference was. So the average of the, the difference between the paired, in this case, the before and after the treatment, is minus 5,018. So this means, in this example, there was an average of a reduction of 5,018 viable cells after treating with uh, this particular drug. You've got the standard deviation of the differences, the standard error of the differences, the 95% confidence intervals of the differences, and the odd square. So this is the amount of variation that can be explained uh, in the differences between the means. So 0.96 is, is very high 
considering the highest is one. In other words, 96 or if we round it up, 97% of the variation in the data can be explained by the before and after average values. We scroll down a little bit more, get this final set of results. So it says, how effective was the pairing? So because this is a paired t-test, you would expect the pairing to be very good. So if one of the data sets is going in one direction, you would expect a relationship to follow in the, upper, in the other data set. So the first one is essentially a Pearson correlation between, in this case, the before and after the treatment. So this is the R value, this is the correlation coefficient. So the correlation coefficient ranges from zero to plus one if it's a positive correlation, and the higher the value, the stronger the correlation. So this is 0.74, which is quite a strong correlation. In other words, as one data set moves up, the other data set also moves up. Uh, this is the p-value of the actual correlation test itself. So this is 0 0.028, which, is, uh, which indicates uh, a significant uh, correlation. And at the end, it says, was the pairing significantly effective? And in this case, it was yes. So this is a good indication that selecting a paired t-test was the right option. So that is how you perform a paired, otherwise known as a dependent, student t-test in GraphPad. So I'll see you in the next video.